Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning. We are so glad that you have tuned in to join us this morning on this first Sunday of Advent. And we pray that it is a wonderful day and a blessing for you. Uh, let's have a word of prayer together. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day and for uh, the opportunity that we have to worship you. And Lord, it's my deepest desire for more of you and for less of me. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Do you like to wait? I, I don't know a single person who likes to wait. Let's face it, uh, waiting is not fun. Uh, whether it's waiting in line in a store or waiting for your food to arrive at a restaurant, or, or waiting for a special occasion to arrive. And certainly for this time of the year, especially for kids, waiting for Christmas Day to arrive. Waiting is not fun. It's, it's not something that we look forward to, um, especially in today's day and age when we want everything we want when we want it. And usually we want it right now, and we don't want to have to wait for it. Well, it's Advent, and I don't know about you, but it feels like it's taken Advent forever to get here this year. Um, I, I feel like I have waited a very long time for Advent of 2020 to finally arrive. This has been perhaps one of the most unusual years that any of us can ever remember in our lives. And it seems like it's taken three years to get from March all the way to here at the end of November. This year's been hard. Um, from the pandemic, which we're still dealing with, to uh, racial injustices, to political unrest, and the list goes on and on. It's, it's been a challenging year for us. And for many, it's been a, a chaotic year. And for some, their lives have been turned upside down this year. And I don't know how many times I've heard someone say, I can't wait for 2020 to be over and 2021 to be here. And as I think about this year, and I think about the fact that Advent is finally here, I can't help but wonder if the people of Jesus' time felt a similar way. Uh, 
as they were waiting for this promise to be fulfilled, this promise of hope, and this promise of peace. I even wonder if some people felt as if Jesus would never show up. Well, just like the people of Jesus' time, we're longing for hope today. We want good news. Because if there is ever a time that we needed the Lord, it's right now. Uh, I invite you to hear our scripture lesson this morning. It comes to us from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. Hear these words of the psalmist. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim. Shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In his commentary on the book of Psalms, James Mays states the following about this particular passage. He says, Whatever the original historical setting, the psalm in its continued use belongs to the repertoire of the afflicted people of God on their way through the troubles of history. It kind of sounds like us today, doesn't it? The, The people of God working our way through the troubles of history. This psalm is actually, it's it's a prayer. It's a prayer for restoration of the people of Israel. And and the opening of this psalm, it, it leads us to believe that God is inattentive or even absent. I mean, have you ever felt that way, that God wasn't paying attention to you, or maybe even that God wasn't even there? But at the same time, the amazing thing about this psalm is that the the psalmist still addresses God in sovereignty, God being holy, mighty ruler, and it speaks to the the power and the presence of God in our lives, even when it feels like God is not paying any attention. There's three verses, verse 3, verse 7, and verse 19, that the the psalmist requests that God restore his people. If you think of this psalm as a song, these three verses would serve as the refrain that keep coming back and echoing over and over. And and, and you see, these two words, restore us, are repeated over and over. They can mean several things in this particular context. In its Hebrew translation, it literally means to cause us to return. Uh, And then there are several appropriate meanings for this phrase in this passage. One is to to bring the people back from exile. The people of Israel, they they knew what it was like to be in exile, and and one of these meanings could be returning from time away, from being away in exile. Uh, Another meaning could be uh, repentance, of, of turning from our sinful and our wicked ways and returning to God. Or Another meaning could be just a simple return to life. And I don't know how many times I've heard somebody say during these past few months, I wish we could go back to life the way it was before 
the pandemic. We're living in a day and age where we want to be restored. We desire God to restore us. Uh, and the refrain also in this psalm, restore us, let your face shine that we may be saved, it points to the blessing of Aaron. Um, and the blessing of Aaron can actually be found in the Old Testament book of Numbers. And it refers to God's face shining on us, God's countenance shining upon us. It's a sign of approval and a sign of blessing from God. And let's face it, who doesn't want to receive approval from God? And who doesn't want to be a recipient of God's blessings in our lives? You see, the psalm, it's a prayer that's an act of faith. God's people trusted him to transform their circumstances, and they wanted God to restore them. Their prayer of faith, in essence, became an act of hope. And as Christian people, Shouldn't we expect to see the reign of God in life and in circumstances where others can only see chaos and despair? A, a little history lesson for you now. The word advent is derived from the Latin word adventus. And that word means coming or to come. It's a translation of the Greek word Parousia. Uh, scholars believe that during the 4th and the 5th centuries in Spain and in Gaul, that Advent was a season of preparation for the baptism of new Christians. And, and this took place not in December, but in January at the Feast of the Epiphany. So during this season of preparation, Christians would spend 40 days in penance, prayer, and fasting to prepare for this celebration. It was a time of waiting, a time of active preparation for what was to come. You see, originally there was little connection between Advent and Christmas. But in the 6th century, the Roman Christians had tied Advent to the coming of Christ. But the coming of Christ that they tied to was not necessarily the first coming of Christ in a manger, but the second coming of Christ in the clouds to come as judge of the world. And it wasn't until the Middle Ages that Advent season was explicitly linked to Christ's first coming at Christmas. Well, the season of Advent is about preparation. It's about preparing to receive the gift of grace and of forgiveness and salvation preparing to live our lives as faithful disciples, preparing to go to the ends of the world to preach the gospel, preparing to receive the newborn king. You know, think about it. There's so much that we do to prepare for Christmas Day. Uh, many of us, perhaps most of us, even today, we already have our Christmas trees up. We already have a lot of our Christmas decorations up. Some people have had their Christmas tree up before Halloween this year. It's, this is part of Christmas. It's about, it's about decorating and preparing for the big day. There's anticipation and there's excitement in preparing for Christmas Day. And on one hand, there's, there's actually, there's joy and there's excitement and the waiting, we, we typically wouldn't say that about waiting, but when it comes to Christmas, there's joy and excitement in the waiting for this big day because we have the assurance that Christmas will soon be here. So along those lines, what would it be like if we spent every opportunity we have to wait filled with anticipation? anticipation to, to see where God is going to show up and, and how God is going to work in our lives. What if we spent the moments that we have waiting, preparing for what God wants to do in us and through us, 
much like the people of the early days of the church preparing during the season of Advent. How how might our waiting change? And, And might we experience a true spirit of preparation as we wait? Rather than jumping into something or some decision, what if we spent time uh, waiting and in and, and preparation of, of spending time with God to give us the right answer, the right thing to do? You know, some of our, our greatest times of growth are experienced when we have to wait. Think about the times in your life when you've had to wait on something or somebody. While the waiting may not have been fun, or it may have been downright painful or difficult, we can often experience incredible spiritual growth as we wait. And better yet, we can experience the very presence of God as we wait. Human nature tells us that we have to rush from one thing to the next without pause. Um, <clears throat> if I'm not busy, then I'm not productive. And if I'm not productive, then I'm not successful. Let's face it, we judge each other based on how successful we are in this life. Well, as we enter into the season of Advent, we remember that it's a time of intentional waiting, active waiting and preparation. It's it's a waiting that leads to something great. But here's the good news in this, is that as 21st century Christians, we don't have to wait for Christ's first coming. He's already among us, Emmanuel, God with us. We have access to God right now. No waiting required. You see, Christ entered the messiness of the world 2,000 years ago, and He wants to enter the messiness of our lives today. But the question is, will we let Him? Will we let Christ move in the chaotic, busy, messy lives that we live to bring about hope and peace? Not just for our sake, but for the sake of the world, so that we might be the hands and the feet of Christ, that the world might be transformed because of His very presence that's here right now. So this first Sunday of Advent, our our Advent candle is the candle of hope. It's a hope that can meet us anywhere. No matter what the messiness of this world may bring, it It's the hope that Emmanuel comes and carries us through life and gives us purpose, a grander purpose than anything we could ever imagine. It's a hope that can restore us, just like the psalmist in Psalm 80 prayed. It's a hope that shines on us, that God's countenance shines on us, that we might receive the blessings that God has in store for us. You see, at the first Christmas, Christ entered into the brokenness of humanity to offer this hope and this peace. People were at odds with one another, and humanity was looking for a brighter and a better day. And Christ was welcomed into the world. Now, He did not receive the welcome that you and I think He should have received, but He was welcomed into the world because God promised a Messiah. And the people waited, and they prepared, and God delivered And Jesus came into the world, and the world was changed forever. You see, even even though the world was full of hatred, despair, pain, turmoil, and uncertainty, Christ still came. 
And Christ still comes today, no matter what we are facing. Christ wants to enter into your world, into my world, to offer hope, peace, joy, and love. So the question is, will we let Christ into our lives? And will we let Christ come into our world and welcome Him into our world? Tears are falling, hearts are breaking, how we long to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting, welcome holy child, welcome holy Hope that you don't mind our manger, how I wish we would have known, but long awaited, holy stranger, make yourself at home, please make yourself at home. hungry souls be filled. We're now breaking heaven's silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our Fragile fingers sent to heal us, tender brow prepared for thorn, tiny heart whose blood can heal us unto us is our injured flesh around you. Breathe our air and walk our side. Rob our sin and make us holy, perfect Son of God. Perfect Son Welcome to our world. God, we thank you that you chose to come into the messiness of the world and that you still come into the messiness of our lives today. God, we thank you that you draw us to yourself. And in this season of Advent, may we choose to wait and to prepare for what you can and want to do in us and through us. And God, we thank you for Jesus, Emmanuel. May we continue to 
to live in his light and to shine his light in this world. We thank you and we praise you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.